please welcome Sophie Axner. And here to, here to talk about her new book, Norma. Now, Sophie, I have to confess, I met you now a couple of times on this stage as well. And I'm always kind of starstruck when I meet you because you're this world-class author, one of the few that I've had the privilege of meeting. How many languages have you been translated to now? Uh, around 50 language uh, territories, Fi yes. 50 languages. I'm not sure I could, I could come up with 50 languages. I, I was going to say that probably, I mean, I have to say that I've learned a lot about languages myself through my translations as, mm -hmm. as well. One of the most surprising ones perhaps was the Occitan translation of... Oh. Occitan is a language spoken, my, um, minority language spoken in the southern France. The south of France, I okay. didn't know much about it. It's a very old language. It's a very beautiful language, not like French at all. But I learned about it through, through my translations. So I, I also learn. <laughs> so here's perhaps a silly question, but when you're an author on your level, do you like hang out with Sadie Smith and Jonathan Safran Foer and I don't know, Jonathan France and Kolbe Knausgård and authors like that? Uh, well, uh, of course, you, you do, do meet international colleagues uh, on international affairs, for example. So, uh, so in that way, sometimes, yes, if I have the chance, if they have time, if I have time. But, you know, usually international authors are also a little bit tired after all they the are. events and, and affairs. So, so, yes. So, in a way that we are not parting all the time. So, so I'm afraid we have all like a high moral to concentrate on the, on, on the work. And what do you do? I mean, I know that you've recently been to Norway, Stavanger, and you, from here you're going on to Denmark to talk about your new book. How do you sort of relax when you get back home? I, I uh, cook. You cook? <laughs> I cook. Uh, you should talk to those guys who are here right now and talk about food. <laughs> yes, uh, slow cooking, uh, you know, long meals that take time and then TV shows. TV shows. TV shows. Anything you recommend? Well, I just uh, finished the second season of Narcos uh, on Netflix last weekend. Narcos. So it's a very good one. Narcos, okay. Um, now, your new novel is about hair. It's about a woman, Norma, who has sort of magical, her hair has some of these mysterious and magical powers. What made you want to write about hair? I've always been interested in hair his history uh, and the hair culture. Uh, hair has uh, been the important element in, in multiple uh, fairy tales, myths, legends. And if you're interested in women's history, then in a way you are also interested in hair history, uh, absolutely. Um, it's part of the fashion, it has always been. Um, it has been a status symbol, it still is. Uh, it can tell about your class, uh, about your, if you are married or not, and things like that, and about your religion as well. Um, but uh, the novel started by accident. I wanted to write a short story, uh, a postmodern version of Rapunzel, the fairy tale, um, which is about hair. Uh, and then it was so much fun, I ended up writing a novel. Now, this, I have to apologize. This may be a kind of inappropriate question. But since we are talking about hair, I think a lot of people, I mean, you have this very sort of trademark uh, appearance with your hairdo, and I, I think many people in your audience maybe even associate you with this this hairdo yeah, the, the that hair you lady. have. Yeah. <laughs> the hair lady, yeah. The hair lady. The hair lady. Well, uh, as I said, I've always been interested in hair, and hair is a lot of fun. I have had dreadlocks for 20 years. My hair is fibrous, that is plastic. Sometimes it could be out of uh, plastic uh, made of seaweed as well. So, in a way, this is the fair way to have extensions, then there's an unfair <laughs> way, and that's the human hair trade, and I'm, I'm writing about the uh, hair, hair trade and hair industry, um, and uh, it has, it's a very lucrative business, um, it's huge business, it's visible and uh, invisible at the same time, mm -hmm. because you might not think that hair industry is kind of important, and yet, at the same time, when you switch on the TV, when you open a magazine, you start to read a newspaper, you will see all the time women wearing someone else's hair. 
Like, if you see Madonna, well, she's not wearing her own hair. You are, most of the celebrities don't have their own hair. It mm-hmm. is someone else's hair, but nobody's asking where the hair comes from. And that's where the problem starts. I mean, hair extensions as, as such, fine. It's cute that you can have the hair you want, and it's fun. Mm. Uh, but the problem is that nobody is, is treating those whose hair is harvested. They are not getting a fair pay. Um, they are always poor women from uh, other countries of lower income. They are selling their hair to feed their children, uh, to um, support the family, to get the um, medical bills paid. So in that way, they are not doing it for fun or for free will. And in the countries where husband is, is in charge of the, of the money, then the husband might be also selling the hair of the wife or the daughters, for example. So in that way, it's, it's very far from the fair trade. Now, are only women selling their hair? Well, usually the women are having the long hair. Okay. <laughs> But usually the men are the ones who are harvesting and distributing it. And, and so in that way, the men are the ones who are collecting the money. You as an author, you've chosen to take on these themes of migration and how history blends into the present and how also crimes against women, uh, oppression of women, um, oppression of refugees, how that sort of keeps going on today, the, the similarities between history and the present going on today. Do you think that how d- if this sort of apocalypse that we almost are experiencing today, if that keeps on, how will that affect you as an author? Will you be able to keep on writing on these themes? uh, Well, I I have to. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I don't know what else to do than write. That's that's also my way to, you know, survive. Mm. And, uh, but um, at the same time, when we in Nordic countries are enjoying extremely high level of freedom of speech, then in many countries, freedom of speech and expression is shrinking uh, in a very concerning way. Also in many Eastern European countries, Hungary, Poland, having new media laws. So in in that way, I think we have even more responsibility about uh, supporting freedom of speech. And not only in Nordic countries, but also, you know, try to try to convince people in other countries where they don't have faith in media then we try to you know, make them believe that free media is a possibility. Because you know, if a country is totally corrupt, people don't believe what they, what they see in news or they don't trust the media, for example. So in a way to, to convince people that there's a, there's a way and free media is one way also to, to outshrew the corruption. I have to, I, have, I hate to end this with sort of a dark question, but I also think it's important Do you, as an author and an intellectual, do you ever feel threatened? Do you ever feel afraid? Mm, afraid is, is, is a strong word. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a Finnish citizen and enjoying, uh, enjoying the possibilities that a free author in uh, Finland can enjoy. Um, but if, I'm, if, I'm, if I get threats, I do. Uh, but... When I want understood that I wanted to uh, become an author, uh, I prepared myself by reading a lot of biographies of authors. Um, quite many great authors have lived in exile. In that way, I'm kind of lucky because I'm living in Finland and I'm writing in Finland. I'm not living in exile. Uh, many Estonians read um, authors. They had to leave the country. They were living in exile. So, in a, in a way, compared to the difficulties of many authors, also today, I mean, many, many of my colleagues are really having, I mean, real threat, not only to themselves, but only t- uh, also to their publishers, um, families. So, compared to that, I, I think my life is pretty easy. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us here in Expressen. Thank you. Stor applaud, Sofie Oxenen.